Greetings, greetings, and welcome to R. Kelly Appeal TV, where we discuss the topics of Robert Sylvester Kelly in the Chicago and New York Appeals and the Bureau of Prisons case as well. We welcome everyone tonight. Thank you so much for being here. Um, tonight, we're going to look at some precedents that has already been put on the books and uploaded to the Supreme Court level where the Supreme Court is going to give, um, and this is what Jennifer Von Jean has been talking about in her opening brief. So as I promised you, we're going to go deeper into how she connected the case that was cited to Robert Sylvester Kelly, and we're going to collaborate with that tonight and discuss how we see the connection. We're going to talk about what a writ of certiorari is. That is very important when it comes down to the criminal justice system, looking primarily at the facts regarding um, where that actual case can have some weakness. And there's a lot of weakness in the New York case. So thank you all for being here tonight. There's a lot of weakness in the case, but we're going to go legal and look at the terminology and look at the expectation of what the court itself is going to look at and what attorney Jennifer Bonjean has already suggested to the, the Court of Appeals to look at, she's already explaining to the three judges the significance of what she saw and what rights were given in Supreme Court cases prior to Robert Sylvester Kelly's case and what RICO is and what RICO is not. Okay, so we're going to go over that tonight. Welcome. Thank you all for Joining in the poll with me today, as far as asking the question, I think I may have, you know, said it wrong, but I was asking the question with the fact that the appeals court is going to make a decision with the hopes that they look at everything that Jennifer Bonjean is stating and everything that is going to be brought down in this case tonight that we're going to break apart. If given the opportunity where they say, okay, it was overreaching, and yes, this is going to be, you know, exonerated or thrown out, or, you know, we're, we're going to, we're going to say that there is no RICO in this case. How much time do you think Robert should get for whatever else was involved? Now, mind you, if, Daryl McDavid and June Brown has been exonerated off of, you know, the case as well as the other issues in New York. I would think time would be already be served. It would have to give, you know, it would have to be time served already for them to feel equivalent to the reality that he had to do some time. Other than that, if it's a complete exoneration, would that hold the government at 100% wrong? Are they willing to do that in their system? That's something I want Kelly Nation to really pay attention to. Is that us thinking way too out of the box? Or will the government accept their wrong in the matter and say that, yes, Donnelly did overstretch the New York case with the RICO impact. Because I believe that's what get because RICO in itself is a 20 year sentence. So if he, if, if she gave him 25, well, if she gave him 30, that overreached even stronger boundaries. But it was more than what Rico itself would have given him 
in a sentence. So we're going to talk about that tonight. And I thank everyone for being here. So y'all feeling all right? Maxie, how you doing? <laughs> yes, home already. Yeah, she definitely over overtook her boundaries. And 66% um, say that if Rico is overturned, would R. Kelly be exonerated from his New York convictions, meaning that everything would be thrown out? So 66% feel that that's not going to be, you know, realistic. And then 33% say that, um, yes, it could be. Everything could be thrown out, time served and all of that. But what we're going to do is get right on into the topic tonight. So the first thing I want to do is talk to you about uh, you know, if you had any questions about the opening brief, I do have that on the live on the podcast at One Success Mindset. If you go to live, you can scroll down and you will see the opening arguments for New York as well as the opening arguments for Chicago. Now, mind you, in the New York argument, I do not incorporate the prosecutorial part on purpose. I did that because of me focusing primarily on the one side, which is the defense, Robert Sylvester Kelly. So basically, I didn't want to overwhelm you. I did not want to overwhelm those who were coming in and having no idea what this system <laughs> is capable of doing. And so that's why. But I will go and bring it all together one day. But tonight, I want to go specifically for those who have went over that um, opening brief. Attorney Jennifer Bonjean said, you know, listen, the RICO that was predominant in the New York case, literally, has standards and statutes that must be followed and adhered to. So we're going to go back to the 1990s and the case that she cited, as well as the 1925 case that talked about RICO in the very beginning, the or the writ of Sarciari. Now, if you remember her saying during the time of the opening brief that there was a writ of Sarciari that was vital to the case, and that was the case that she had um, cited, right? So I'm going to go over firstly what a writ is about, okay? Hey, Patricia. No, Patricia, we're not doing that. I'm going to hide that right there because um, we already have the hearing opening brief on this channel. So we don't, we don't advertise over here unless I approve it, okay? But anyway, um, hey, Wise, how are you? So back to what we were saying, um, Kelly Nation. So what is happening here is you have, I forgot where I was going with that. So anyway, a writ of certiari is, let me see here. I have this for you. So we're going to talk about the word certiari, and it's a type of writ that is meant in rare cases. So mind you, what's going to take place is from the lower level courts, Donley, with uh, the appeal with Robert Sylvester Kelly, Donley had gave out a sentence. So with every sentence that she gives out as a judge, the defense the defendant has a right to appeal that. So he is able to go and Robert is avail available to go and appeal anything that is put on the docket regarding his name. He's, he's able to fight any defendant in any court of law is able to appeal something for themselves. Now, once that second circuit says this is what it is or this is what it is not, then... That type of writ means that they have the appellate court 
has to take it to a Supreme Court level. When you hit the Supreme Court level, it's going to decide whether the Supreme Court should review it at its discretion and then decide if they're going to go to the lower courts. Now, this is uh, the Second Circuit. So they're going to make the decision, okay, this was sent up here. We're going to look at it. And we do feel that there is some form of disorder or some unlawful expectation in this RICO that needs to be reconsidered. And that's when the Supreme Court will say, after being given, I guess, 100 to 150 different cases a year, they only handle up to 150 cases. So it has to be very rare and it has to be very special. And we understand that Robert Sylvester Kelly's case is very, very special. So the Supreme Court, if the lower level courts, if, if the Second Circuit does not do what it needs to do and give us due diligence to answer the question, is the RICO involved in an individual enterprise? Or was that enterprise an enterprise, a business that was used primarily for the sole purpose of, of getting women to be a part of an entourage that was going to sexually seduce them. And the courts were not able to show that. That's why the judge got so very angry at Bonjean and continued to ask the question to distract her when they said, when the one judge said, are you sure that the court did not give the juries their instruction. That's the reason why this case is so serious and severe. So basically the word sorciari comes from a law Latin and it means to be more fully informed. So the Supreme Court will want to be more fully informed because there is something that may be missing from this, from this case. And that's the reason why um, I wanted to, to share that specifically. So is everyone following me? I need you to put a one in the chat. Hey, take it to the grave. How you doing? I need you to put a one in the chat if you understand what I talked, what I'm speaking about in Cerciari, what that writ is and how valuable the second court of appeals, the second circuit must be in the way they're going to hand down their, their decision. And when Jennifer Bonjean says specifically that she had a case and we're going to go over that case and this case already stated what a RICO act is. And there's not enough evidence in this case with Robert Sylvester Kelly in New York that could define Donnelly giving him a RICO charge. That's a beautiful thing. Beautiful thing. So let me see here. Let me turn this off so we won't be bothered. Okay. So everyone understands. Great. Now we're going to turn to the actual case. Now you remember in the opening of the opening brief in New York, Jennifer Bonjean made the statement, Boyle and Trunquette. Remember those two cases. So Boyle and Trunquette had an opinion that was granted to them. And I let me get the document on here. So this is the very thing that is going to be of service to Robert Sylvester Kelly. And we're gonna try our best to read this. All right, so I want you to listen to this. So this case was, this case was um, Boyle versus the United States. This was in 2009. So we wanna go back all the way to 1999 when this case first started. 
So this is the case that she was referring to, that she cited. This was a great uh, time because this was the same time that Robert Sylvester Kelly was just getting into the industry of business in the 1990s. So it's not too much of an old, um, it's not an old law. It's very up to date. And I think I understand how she is, un it, she says that the court was unable to determine 100% that there was a RICO involved in not an enterprise, but an individual. And so then I asked myself the question, I said, can an enterprise be one person? Can one person be an enterprise, right? So when I asked myself that question, this is what I found. So basically, yes, um, one person can be an enterprise in a RICO situation if, let me double check the words, um, so on this one it says here, the only way that a enterprise can be considered a RICO involving one individual where only one person goes down is if that person was the mastermind behind an illegal and corrupt situation in a business that was solely proprietized for the benefit of having sex. So they would never be able to ever say that R. Kelly definitely created his musical industry and became a, a, a giant in the music industry just to have sex. They will never be able to say that. You know why, Kelly Nation? Because he was already having sex before he became a singer. Remember, in Solar Coaster, he was already having sex before anyone really knew who he was. So he did not need his voice in order to do the deed. And, and then the enterprise have to be, he would have to have hired everyone to do that very thing where they all understood that he was going to just perform to only have sex. They're never going to be able to show that. But then another, um, I'm trying to think, this is 109 point RICO charges under the United States Department of Justice. No, an enterprise in the Racketeering Influenced and Corrupt Organizations RICO Act is not the same as an individual. An enterprise can be a corporation, a political party, a managed care company, a street gang, a crime family, or an association in fact. An association, in fact, is a group of individuals who are associated in fact, but not legally. The government must prove that the association was ongoing, that the members or associates worked as a continuing unit to achieve a common purpose. Well, to go to achieve a common purpose, to me, I would assume that anyone who was in the tour business of promoting his his um, musical tours and setting them up is the only person in the enterprise that was conditionable to making sure that he made it to each event. Now, what happened during the event was not part of setting up what they consider an ongoing association for a purpose of having sex. They're not going to be able to prove that. And we're going to hear this in this case tonight. Hopefully you're reading what's in front of you um, right now. And that the enterprise was separate from the pattern of racketeering activity that the government alleges it engaged in. Do you see it? Um, it's separate from the pattern of racketeering. So if they're going to accuse Robert of being a RICO act, then basically they're going to have to look at the pattern of musical industry behavior as a racketeering activity. And they're not going to be able to do that. They're just not. 
Proof of an enterprise would come from documents, testimony, and examination of what the group does. So as we saw, Daryl McDavid, all of his managers, people who wrote the checks, they were not involved in that. So there was no enterprise on that level. Most courts have held that in such cases, the individual and association, in fact, enterprise, that includes the individual are distinct. For example, a corporation may be the enterprise through which individuals commit crimes. So the corporation may be responsible, okay? But... The corporation may be the enterprise through which individuals, so the individuals come into the corporation to, to manipulate it. I don't believe that all the work, blood, sweat, and tears that Robert Sylvester Kelly put into his industry, his musical talents, if he was going in just to have sex, it would have shown he never would have been able to make it as king of R&B. And then on top of that, he never would have been able to keep up with all the musical talents and prowess that he had to have in order to be number one all those years. So that's just insanity. But it cannot be both an, ind an individual and the enterprise. RICO makes it illegal for anyone associated with an enterprise that affects interstate or foreign commerce. That's why they knew, use that word. They knew a little bit, so they. I think prosecution and Derogatis got a hold in the wind of something that they could plug in, and this was what an attorney suggested they plug in in order to uh, corrupt it and to make this a RICO enterprise type thing, but they used it wrong. They used it incorrectly. And yes, the foreign commerce and the interstate, all of that, they used every word they needed to in order to make it look as though it's a RICO situation. The RICO statute provides for prison terms of 20 years and a severe financial penalty. So 20 years was all that a RICO would have been able to adhere to as far as like limitation of how much the sentencing is even worth. The law also allows prosecutors to attach assets so they cannot be whisked out of the country before judgment. So that's the reason why Robert Sylvester Kelly had no bond in that very situation, okay? So before I get there, I just wanted to let you know that that's what a writ of certiorari is, and I also wanted you to know that um, it's very important that we understand what these terms are so that we are very, very clear. So Jennifer Bonjean is saying specifically that this case right here, Boyle and Trunquette, and if you remember hearing that in the opening brief, when she went to New York's opening brief hearing, and again, if you need to go back and review it, you can do so um, on this podcast here, and you will hear the side of the actual defense. I really feel that to listen to it all at this point right now, unless you have already read this document right here, you will be under the assumption that he's done. Robert is done. Um, if you haven't, um, we're going to go over this brief, then I'm going to bring it all together with what um, Bonjean's opening brief and the prosecutor's opening brief, okay? But right now, let's listen to what I want to bring to you tonight. Boyle v. United States, 556 U.S. 938. Opinion of the Court Boyle v. United States, 556 U.S. Supreme Court of the United States, no. 07-1309. Edmund Boyle, Petitioner v. United States. On writ of certiorari to the United States Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit. Justice Alito delivered the opinion of the court. 
We are asked in this case to decide whether an association in fact enterprise under the Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act, 18 U.S.C. 1961 at seek must have an ascertainable structure beyond that inherent in the pattern of racketeering activity in which it engages. Pet. For cert. I. We hold that such an enterprise must have a structure, but that an instruction framed in this precise language is not necessary. The district court properly instructed the jury in this case. We therefore affirm the judgment of the Court of Appeals. I. A. The evidence at Petitioner's trial was sufficient to prove the following. Petitioner and others participated in a series of bank thefts in New York, New Jersey, Ohio, and Wisconsin during the 1990s. The participants in these crimes included a core group, along with others who were recruited from time to time. Although the participants sometimes attempted bank vault burglaries and bank robberies, the group usually targeted cash-laden night deposit boxes, which are often found in banks and retail areas. Each theft was typically carried out by a group of participants who met beforehand to plan the crime, gather tools, and assign the roles that each participant would play. Now let's stop right there. So as you can see, the enterprise of a RICO racketeering um, influencing act is saying that you have to be corrupt from the very beginning. So as you saw in Boyle, these people got together with the assumption. So basically, R. Kelly had to have gotten together with, this is what Bonjean is breaking down to the, to the, to the Second Circuit of Appeals. She's saying, um, your honor, Robert Sylvester Kelly would have been able to get to Daryl McDavid, Diana Copeland, Sparkle, and all the people that was in his front line. I can't even remember them all. Um, Demetrius and all of the people. And he must have had the opportunity to say, I want to create my music industry in order to produce pornography in my backpack and you guys are going to help me do it. And these are the tools we're going to use. And I'm going to pay you to do this stuff for me. This is what the prosecution is telling us, Kelly Nation, that they believe that the RICO Act was involving specifically Robert Sylvester Kelly saying that this is what he was going to do. He was going to file a corrupt enterprise and create something this horrific such as like in this case with Boyle. Boyle got with his peers and said, we're going to create a bank robbery and this is how it's going to go down. You're going to be this. You're going to do that. You're going to do this and you're going to do that. And we will come back and meet at a later date. Now that is the RICO. That is, even if one person is the enterprise um guru. He's the smart, the brains of it all. Robert Sylvester Kelly was, and they tried to do it with his enterprise. They even tried to put it, remember the octopus, the, the, um, all of a sudden now he's a businessman with all these, um, LLCs and this and that, and that, and this, some attorney told these prosecutors to go after it this particular way. Okay, and I hope you guys are following me because this is what I want to make sense of it all. And I want you to understand why Bonjean felt. And then the judge, the, the judge that was distracting her was distracting her for a specific reason in and of itself. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't even have the paperwork. Hold on. Let me go over here. I thought I had the, the window capture on. Let me see. I think I might have a window capture on. Do I have the window capture on, guys? Oh, man. <laughs> oh, I think. I think it's on. Yeah, there we go. All right. So, so basically, this is how it has to be. So let's go back to 
the boil and trunk it because this is very, very valuable piece of information. Although the participants sometimes attempted bank vault burglaries and bank robberies, the group usually targeted cash-laden night deposit boxes, which are often found in banks and retail areas. Each theft was typically carried out by a group of participants who met beforehand to plan the crime, gather tools, and assign the roles that each participant would play. The participants generally split the proceeds from the thefts. Mm. The group was loosely... So let's talk about that. No one split proceeds from anything relative to Robert Sylvester Kelly because if anybody was giving employment, it was for specifically the, for the, the business, for Daryl McDavid to do what he does, to pay checks. And so they're trying to say that the enterprise of the money that was being allocated to these parents and all of that was all specifically for the enterprise. Do you see how somebody was brilliant enough to put the RICO concept into the allocation of this new uh, indictment that happened to have to do with going to for child support? But now we're not even talking about child support at this time. Because now the RICO case that we're talking about specifically is, is, is around the concept of how can we take him down? And what's so crazy is I did some research, Kelly Nation, and it takes 10 years for an opportunity to become a RICO. And they're going to talk about this in the bull case. And Jennifer Bonjean was on it when she, when she cited this case. They talked about how the Boyle case said that um, it needed to be a 10-year incremental time before two situations can come together to create a RICO um, to this degree, to this magnitude, to whereas they were putting Robert Sylvester Kelly in this, in, in, in this scenario. So if you think 2008, he was exonerated from 2008. They caught him up again, 2019. Ain't that almost, you know, okay, 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 2018, it was almost 10 years, but they didn't catch it in enough time. There was also a connection that, you know, the reason why Donley decided to give him that extra five years or to make it 30 years or whatever was because he had already... They took that old information from the exoneration and then they plugged it back and gave it back to him in 2019. But the time of limitations, man, I'm telling you, Bonjean know what she doing. When I read this, I was like, okay, that girl got it down pat. She got it good, y'all. Okay, let's hear this. Each theft was typically carried out by a group of participants who met beforehand to plan the crime gather tools, and assign the roles that each participant would play. The participants generally split the proceeds from the thefts. The group was loosely and informally organized. It does not appear to have had a leader or hierarchy, nor does it appear that the participants ever formulated any long-term master plan or agreement. From 1991 to 1994, the CORE group was responsible for more than 30 night deposit box thefts. By 1994, Petitioner had joined the group, and over the next five years, he participated in numerous attempted night deposit box thefts and at least two attempted bank vault burglaries. In 2003, Petitioner was indicted for participation in the conduct of the affairs of an enterprise through a pattern of racketeering activity, in violation of 18 U.S.C. 1962. Conspiracy to commit that offense, in violation of 1962. Conspiracy to commit bank burglary, in violation of 371. And nine counts of bank burglary and attempted bank burglary, in violation of 2113. B. In instructing the jury on the meaning of a RICO enterprise, the district court relied largely on language in United States v. Turkett, 
452 U.S. 576. The court told the jurors that, in order to establish the existence of such an enterprise, the government had to prove that, they're an ongoing organization with some sort of framework, formal or informal, for carrying out its objectives. And the various members and associates of the association function as a continuing unit to achieve a common purpose. App. 112. Over petitioner's objection, the court also told the jury that it could find an enterprise where an association of individuals, without structural hierarchy, formed solely for the purpose of carrying out a pattern of racketeering acts and that common sense suggests that the existence of an association in fact is oftentimes more readily proven by what it does, rather than by abstract analysis of its structure. It, at 111, 112, Petitioner requested an instruction that the government was required to prove that the enterprise had an ongoing organization, hmm. a core membership that functioned as a continuing unit, and an ascertainable structural hierarchy distinct from the charged predicate acts. And, at 95, the district court refused to give that instruction. Petitioner was convicted on 11 of the 12 counts against him, including the RICO counts, and was sentenced to 151 months imprisonment. In a summary order, the Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit affirmed his conviction, but vacated the sentence on a ground not relevant to the issues before us. 283 Fed. Apps. 825. The Court of Appeals did not specifically address the RICO jury instructions, stating only that the arguments not discussed in the order were without merit. And at 826. So now, remember, that was the very thing that bond that the attorney, the judge kept asking, are you sure the jury instruction was done properly? Yes, the jury instruction for any RICO act is done properly because there's a step-by-step -step instruction that the jury is required to follow. But that wasn't what Bonjean was talking about. Bonjean was saying, look, the enterprise in and of itself is not as sufficient as they need it to be in order for a RICO to have even existed in Robert Sylvester Kelly's case, period, point blank. So that's what I want you to understand, that even in this appeal, excuse me, that was happening at the exact same time, Robert Sylvester Kelly was just coming out to the world this same very sentence is saying to the court, this is how you decide on a RICO connection. But some prosecutor listened to some attorney that basically told him, this is how you trap them up. This is how you catch them up. Put them in a RICO act. Very, very weird. Very weird. So Bonjean is on it. And... At 826, petitioner was then resentenced, and we granted certiorari, 554 U.S., to resolve conflicts among the courts of appeals concerning the meaning of a RICO enterprise. Now, this case had to be taken all the way to the Supreme Court. And Bonji was saying to the judges, listen, this has already been explained. You have to have very serious point blank perspectives as to how you're going to judge this RICO connection. And it can't just be because all of a sudden everybody is an enterprise and all of a sudden all all of a sudden the people that are involved in the business becomes um uh what becomes pawns and patsies to this enterprise you have to prove that Robert Sylvester Kelly had a plan in his mind when he started on that bus um, on the, the L train that he was going to become a superstar specifically to promote sexual activities and, and get a whole bunch of women. You would have to show that. And this Rico experience here, because that's the only thing they can plug it in. He didn't rob a bank. He did not rob a bank. Robert did not steal anything from anyone. Everything that Robert Sylvester Kelly got during his career as R. Kelly was 
either bought and paid for or voluntarily given. So where is the RICO enterprise? Where is this man? And as you see, they had to, oh, they had to change his sentence because there was no RICO involved. So if he got 152 years for doing, or 152 months for doing what he did as a bank robber and got it overturned, and he was doing, like, you know, the, somebody was robbing the bank. So yeah, there was actual proof that, you know, he was robbing the bank. But the reality of it is the writ of certiorari was sent up to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court had to look at the ruling and the expectations of what RICO represented. And this is not what RICO represents. Kelly Nation is not. RICO makes it unlawful for any person employed by or associated with any enterprise engaged in, or the activities of which affect, interstate or foreign commerce, to conduct or participate, directly or indirectly, in the conduct of such enterprises affairs through a pattern of racketeering activity or collection of unlawful debt. 18 U.S.C. 1962. The statute does not specifically define the outer boundaries of the enterprise concept but states that the term includes any individual, partnership, corporation, association, or other legal entity, and any union or group of individuals associated in fact, although not a legal entity. 1961. This enumeration of included enterprises is obviously broad, encompassing any group. Now, of individuals associated in fact, there we go. Somebody got smart and wanted to plug him into something criminal, and they said Rico. That's why when we heard about the Rico statutes, it was like, ain't that for racketeering? And oh, now they saying that he was a um a mafia dude, and that's why I couldn't understand it. But yes, there are, it is outlined. And this is what Bonjean was telling the judge that seemed to not understand what she was saying. During the Boyle case, it was all, Boyle and Trunquette already broke it down that this was what racketeering and RICO influence corruption organization means. Not, and, and the outlying part of it, unless they come and make precedents, to this case, the judge is going to have to, the judges and the appeal level is going to have to um, decide on what Trunkett and Boyle said in the Supreme Court because they have to follow this rule. So, Bonjean, girl, you got it going on. I, I just got to say. <laughs> here we go. Let me see. Not, notwithstanding these precedents. The dissent asserts that the definition of a RICO enterprise is limited to business-like entities. See post, at 1, 5, we see no basis to impose such an extra-textual requirement. B. As noted, the specific question on which we granted certiorari is whether an association in fact enterprise must have an ascertainable structure beyond that inherent in the pattern of racketeering activity in which it engages. Pet. For cert, I, we will break this question into three parts. First, must an association in fact enterprise have a structure? Second, must the structure be ascertainable? Third, must the structure go beyond that inherent in the pattern of racketeering activity in which its members engage? Structure. We agree with petitioner that an association in fact enterprise must have a structure. In the sense relevant here, the term structure means the way in which parts are arranged or put together to form a whole and the interrelation or arrangement of parts in a complex entity. American Heritage Dictionary 1718. See also Random House Dictionary of the English Language 1410. From the terms of RICO, it is apparent that an association in fact enterprise must have at least three structural features, a purpose relationships among those associated with the enterprise, and longevity sufficient to permit these associates to pursue the enterprise's purpose. Now that's where the that's where the prosecution got their attorneys and said these three things. The purpose is, oh, 
He can get women whenever and however he wants. He even talks about it and he sings about it. And he says that this is that and that is this in his world and he can get everything because he's a flirt, okay? And then not only the purpose, the length of time. Okay, so he's been in there. That's why they wanted to wait 30 years. Do you hear me? That 30 years is a, is a significant amount of time to say that this corruption existed all this time. And then the people in which he hired. Come on, Kelly Nation. Y'all already know what's up. Jim Derogatory, you did something. See, the devil is always in the details. It's always there. Man, let me keep going. We got a lot to listen to. Hold on. From the terms of RICO, it is apparent that an association in fact enterprise must have at least three structural features, a purpose, relationships among those associated with the enterprise, and longevity sufficient to permit these associates to pursue the enterprise's purpose. As we succinctly put it in Turkat, an association in fact. Enterprise is a group of persons associated together for a common purpose of engaging in a course of conduct. 452 U.S. at 5. Now, a boil in Trunquette, they did the, the, um, the robberies together with these people. They literally sat down and said, this is how we're going to plan the scheme, just like they did in Dead Presidents or like they did with Set It Off, okay? They had relationships within relationships. I don't believe that this is what it was because if it was, Somebody somewhere would have said something earlier. Something would have been documented, just like when um, the Demetrius dude left and all of this stuff. And then how is it that the very thing that the prosecution talks about was fake? And that was the marriage license. Come on with it, y'all. Come on, Kelly Nation. Let it, let it, let it settle in your spirit. Let it sink in your spirit. Here we go. Let me see here. The concept of associate requires both interpersonal relationships and a common yeah. interest. Seated at 132, Black's Law Dictionary 156. Section 1962 reinforces this conclusion and also shows that an enterprise must have some longevity. Since the offense proscribed by that provision demands proof that the enterprise had affairs of sufficient duration to permit an associate to participate in those affairs through a pattern of racketeering activity. Although an association in fact enterprise must have these structural features, it does not follow that a district court must use the term structure in its jury instructions a trial judge has considerable discretion in choosing the language of an instruction so long as the substance of the relevant point is adequately expressed ascertainable whenever a jury is told that it must find the existence of an element beyond a reasonable doubt that element must be ascertainable or else the jury could not find that it was proved therefore Telling the members of the jury that they had to ascertain the existence of an ascertainable structure would have been redundant and potentially misleading. Beyond that inherent in the pattern of racketeering activity, this phrase may be interpreted in least two different ways, and its correctness depends on the particular sense in which the phrase is used. If the phrase is interpreted to mean that the existence of an enterprise is a separate element that must be proved, it is of course correct. As we explained in Turkit, the existence of an enterprise is an element distinct from the pattern of racketeering activity and proof of one does not necessarily establish the other. 452 U.S. at 583. On the other hand, if the phrase is used to mean that the existence of an enterprise may never be inferred from the evidence showing that persons associated with the enterprise engaged in a pattern of racketeering activity, it is incorrect. We recognized in Turkit that the evidence used to prove the pattern of racketeering activity and the evidence establishing an enterprise may in particular cases coalesce. Ibid. C. 
The crux of petitioner's argument is that a RICO enterprise must have structural features in addition to those that we think can be fairly inferred from the language of the statute. Although petitioner concedes that an association in fact enterprise may be an informal group. And that, not, much, structure is needed. Reply brief for petitioner 24. He contends that such an enterprise must have at least some additional structural attributes, such as a structural, hierarchy, role differentiation, a, unique modus operandi, a, chain of command. Profession now that's something that Robert did not have. Kelly Nation, I do apologize. I did screenshot this. Boyle um, versus the U.S. opinion, it can be found. I will put the link in the description box when I am done with this, but it was like 27 pages. We're not going to go over all of them. I just wanted to get you to pay attention to the fact that um, the decisions of the Supreme Court, this is how they have already ruled on this already existing RICO structure. And this is where Jennifer Bonjean said that this, she had to obviously know that she was going to be going on this route before when they realized they were going to have to take it to an appeal. So she decided to use Boyle for a reason. And that reason is very, very valid. And as you can see, and I'm going to get back to the, um, to the chat, if you guys want me to continue to keep reading on this so we can plug it in to exactly what Robert Sylvester Kelly is going through in his appeal in New York with Rico, I can continue to do so, but I don't want to bore you too long. But let's finish listening to the opinion and how they ruled and why Bonjean chose to use Boyle and Trunquette on the, um, as the um, buffering unit for the appeals judges to look at. We see no basis in the language of RICO for the structural requirements that petitioner asks us to recognize. As we said in Turkic, an association in fact enterprise is simply a continuing unit that functions with a common purpose. Such a group need not have a hierarchical structure or a chain of command. So as you can see, uh, in his case, they're saying that he hired all these people to be his hierarchy and these people ran and done the work for him. This is how the devil was trying to devour this man before they could even put it all together. They used one criminal law and they called it Rico. And this is how this man was sent down for all those years. Because I just knew that with the RICO, I thought if it was a regular, true sentencing that is a regular, he would have got five to seven years. If you go back, you will hear R. Kelly Appeal TV saying the most he would get was three to five. Okay. And when we heard 30, it was ridiculously crazy. And then it goes all the way back to the way the Lifetime series came about, the way Tasha K situation came about. That's how they were going to set it up. That's exactly how they put all their ducks in a row to play the game. And we as a society was supposed to be blind, deaf, and dumb to this and not pay any attention to what was going on. But their systems are failing big time. We see no basis in the language of RICO for the structural requirements that petitioner asks us to recognize. As we said in Turkic, an association in fact enterprise is simply a continuing unit that functions with a common purpose. Such a group need not have a hierarchical structure or a chain of command. Decisions may be made on an ad hoc basis and by any number of methods, by majority vote, consensus, a show of strength, etc. Members of the group need not have fixed roles. Different members may perform different roles at different times. The group need not have a name, regular meetings, dues, established rules and regulations, disciplinary procedures, or induction or initiation ceremonies. While the group must function as a continuing unit and remain in existence long enough to pursue a course of conduct, nothing in RICO exempts an enterprise whose associates engage in spurts of activity punctuated by periods of quiescence. Nor is the statute limited to groups whose crimes are sophisticated, diverse, complex, or unique. For example, a group that does nothing but engage in extortion through old-fashioned, 
unsophisticated, and brutal means may fall squarely within the statute's reach. The breadth of the enterprise concept in RICO is highlighted by comparing the statute with other federal statutes that target organized criminal groups. For example, 18 U.S.C. Section 1955, which was enacted together with RICO as part of the Organized Crime Control Act of 1970, 84 Stat. 922, defines an illegal gambling business as one that involves five or more persons who conduct, finance, manage, supervise, direct, or own all or part of such business. A. Continuing criminal enterprise, as defined in 21 U. S. C. Section 848, must involve more than five persons who act in concert and must have an organizer, supervisor, or other manager. Con now, do you see how they played themselves, Kelly Nation? They tried so hard to get this man caught up in this charge until they did not even go deep enough to even see if it was going to stick because they thought that he was not going to, he was going to probably, um, he was probably going to go ahead and plead guilty or he was going to do something to sentence himself to life because of the fact that he was too emotional. But he did not say a word. And don't forget, attorney Jennifer Bonjean was not supposed to be a part of the scenario. But when she popped up and when she came through, all of a sudden this Rico thing don't make sense. We want to know. Kelly Nation members need to know. This is an emotional point of view here. A very emotional point of view. They got that man in there incarcerated to the point where doctors don't want to take cast off his legs. He find out he diabetic. He find out that he got to be beat up in a, in a cell and put in a position of a life-threatening situation all because these people are jealous of his masters, of his life. Man, and this is a joke. This is a game, Kelly. Life, if life is a game and an illusion, this is crazy. This is crazy how they play the game. So let's see. Contrary to petitioner's claims, rejection of his argument regarding these structural characteristics does not lead to a merger of the crime proscribed by 18 U. Look. S. C. Section 1962 and any of the following offenses. Mm. Operating a gambling business. Okay. Section 1950. We can look at, instead of operating a gambling business, we can look at it as operating a musical industry. Being a, being a musical artist. That's how, there is no structure. There was not even a structure because all of these people that were hired by Robert Sylvester Kelly was hired independently. Independently. And they're trying to make it seem like that brother Bruce or whichever one tried to pretend that he was hired by Robert Sylvester Kelly because that was his brother and he didn't pay him and this and that and that and this. Yeah. Yeah. Even got to the blood of the brother. That's why I say your family sometimes is the hardest people that will destroy you in a blink of an eye just to get a penny. Oh my God, this is so crazy. Proof that a defendant violated section 1955 does not necessarily establish that the defendant conspired to participate in the affairs of a gambling enterprise through a pattern of racketeering activity. So we can take in order it to not into uh, racketeering as far as that, but we can take it into the music industry. There is no way they're going to be able to tap into the reality that they're going to get into the mindsets of this man for him to say yes. And it, had he had pled guilty like they expected, he would have been up for all of this. See, they weren't expecting Robert to be as strong as he was. And I see the chat moving. I'm going to get to y'all. Thank you so much for being here. Please hit the like button, subscribe, because this is some serious stuff. This is what we've been talking about since 2020, like many other people. But this right here is the appeal portion that we've been saying that things just didn't make sense, Kelly Nation. So then it goes back. Here we go. So there was no structure. There was no framing of professional um, expectation outside of, of, of business in the musical industry.
and it took them to get his wife to play the game with them. Oh my God, she drug him into the court and we are wondering why would Andrea Kelly do that? She had to do it, y'all. She had to. In order for this Rico to make sense that we separating and breaking apart right now that Bon Jean hooked us on to. Go ahead, girl. Do your damn thing. Likewise, proof that a defendant conspired to commit a Rico predicate offense. For example, arson does not necessarily establish that the defendant participated in the affairs of an arson enterprise through a pattern of arson crimes. Under Section 371, a conspiracy is an inchoate crime that may be completed in the brief period needed for the formation of the agreement and the commission of a single overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy. See United States v. Fiala, 420 U. S. 671, 694. Section 1962 demands much more. The creation of an enterprise, a group with a common purpose and course of conduct, and the actual commission of a pattern of predicate offenses. Finally, while in practice the elements of a violation of sections 1962 and are similar, this overlap would persist even if petitioner's conception of an association in fact enterprise were accepted. B. Because the statutory language is clear, there is no need to reach petitioner's remaining arguments based on statutory purpose, legislative history, or the rule of lenity. In prior cases, we have rejected similar arguments in favor of the clear but expansive text of the statute. Hmm. See National Organization for Women, 510 U. S. At 262, the fact that RICO has been applied in situations not expressly anticipated by Congress does not demonstrate ambiguity. It demonstrates breadth. See also Turkett, 452 U. S. At 589 to 591. Now, mind you, we she have repeatedly also refused. Remind, remember, Kelly Nation, she also cited Trunquette in the opening brief in New York. So this right here, these judges have to review this, just the opinions that we're listening to right now. They have to adhere to the rules and guidelines that the Supreme Court set down in Boyle and Trunquette. And this is what they're going to be looking at, regardless of how many times he tried to overtalk her in that courthouse. And no matter how many times prosecution just told the same damn life story movie that we're talking about right now, this still does not impact what is known as a, a statute of RICO to be indicted and sentenced under. It's not enough evidence, but let's keep going. I just wanted you guys to remember that. And if you need to, we can go over Trunquette too. But right now, I think Boyle is more than enough for us to understand that they overreached their boundaries in New York. We already understood that they did wrong. That's why everything was sidebarred. Now, don't it make sense, Kelly Nation? Y'all always said, make it make sense. Make it make sense. I hope this is helping y'all to make it make sense. Look, I hope it is. We have repeatedly refused to adopt narrowing constructions of RICO in order to make it conform to a preconceived notion of what Congress intended to proscribe. Bridge v. Phoenix Bond and Indemnity Company, 553 U. S. Slip Up. At 20 C also, e.g., National Organization for Women, Supra, at 252 H. J. Inc. V. Northwestern Bell Telephone Company. 492 U. S. 229, 244. Sedema, Supra, at 481, rejecting the view that RICO provides a private right of action only against defendants who had been convicted on criminal charges and only where there had occurred a racketeering injury. I.V. The instructions the district court judge gave to the jury in this case were correct and adequate. These instructions explicitly told the jurors that they could not convict on the RICO charges unless they found that the government had proved the existence of an enterprise. See App 111. The instructions made clear that this was a separate element from the pattern of racketeering activity. Ibid. The instructions also adequately told the jury that the enterprise needed to have the structural attributes that may be inferred from the statutory language. Hmm. 
As noted, the trial judge told the jury that the government was required to prove that there was an ongoing organization with some sort of framework, formal or informal. Now, yes, there had to be a framework because you got this man as a, a superstar. So, of course, there's going to be framework. Of course, there's going to be, you know, um, uh, business development going on. It's going to be some structure there, but not the structure that they're trying to portray in this situation uh, with Robert Sylvester Kelly. This is crazy, y'all. Y'all already know God already had the ram in the bush when B Jennifer Bonjean showed up right after Bill Cosby got, ex got cleared from all of his stuff. These people in the system uh, probably already gave the, the Federal Bureau of Prisons the okay for that woman to go in and do that stuff to get that information out there so they could stop that man's money to prevent him from being able to have even something to eat in an incarcerated state. And that is nothing more than the devil doing its due. And, oh man, but you have been exposed. You have been exposed for everything you've done to so many of us, including myself. You have played the game so many times to innocent people or people who just had to deal with whatever drama or trauma they had to face in their lives. And now all of a sudden you wanna sit there and point the finger and call yourself a government. This is what you govern? This is how your children eat? This is how you do what you do? Oh, you should be ashamed of yourself. Where is your father and mother? You need to be trained. You need to be trained. Regarding organization, it is not necessary that the enterprise have any particular or formal structure, but it must have sufficient organization that its members functioned and operated in a coordinated manner in order to carry out the alleged common purpose or purposes of the enterprise. App 111 to 113. Footnote to this provision does not purport to set out an exhaustive definition of the term enterprise. Compare sections 1961 with sections 1961. Accordingly, this provision does not foreclose the possibility that the term might include, in addition to the specifically enumerated entities, others that fall within the ordinary meaning of the term enterprise. C.H. J. Inc. versus Northwestern Bell Telephone Company, 492 U, we S. 229, mm -hmm. 238, explaining that the term pattern also retains its ordinary meaning notwithstanding the statutory definition in Section 1961. Section 1961. Footnote 3 The dissent claims that the business like limitation is confirmed by the text of section 1962 in our decision in Reeves versus okay, Ernst well, we and won't Young, go there. Hold 500, on. Stevens, J, dissenting Boyle v. United States 556 U, S, Supreme Court of the United States No. 071309. Edmund Boyle, petitioner v. United States. On writ of certiorari to the United States Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit. Justice Stevens, with whom Justice Breyer joins, dissenting. In my view, Congress intended the term, enterprise, as it is used in the Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act, 18 U. S. C. Section 1961 et seek. To refer only to business-like entities that have an existence apart from the predicate acts committed by their employees or associates. The trial judge in this case committed two significant errors relating to the meaning of that term. Hmm. First, he instructed the jury that an association of individuals without structural hierarchy formed solely for the purpose of carrying out a pattern of racketeering acts can constitute an enterprise. App 112. And he allowed the jury to find that element satisfied by evidence showing a group of criminals with no existence beyond its intermittent commission of racketeering acts and related offenses. Because the court's decision affirming petitioner's conviction is inconsistent with the statutory meaning of the term enterprise and serves to expand RICO liability far beyond the bounds Congress intended, I respectfully dissent. I. RICO makes it. Unlawful for any person employed by or associated with any enterprise engaged in, 
or the activities of which affect interstate or foreign commerce to conduct or participate directly or indirectly in the conduct of such enterprises affairs through a pattern of racketeering activity. Section 1962, the statute defines enterprise to include any individual, partnership, corporation, association, or other legal entity, and any union or group of individuals associated in fact although not a legal entity. Section 1961. It is clear from the statute and our earlier decisions construing the term that Congress used, enterprise, in these provisions in the sense of a business organization, Webster's Third New International Dictionary 757, rather than a venture, undertaking, or project, anti. At 6. First, the terms individual, partnership, corporation, association, or other legal entity, describe entities with formal legal structures most commonly established for business purposes. Section 1961. In context, the subsequent reference to any union or group of individuals associated in fact although not a legal entity, reflects an intended commonality between the legal and non-legal entities included in the provision. Ibid, the juxtaposition of the two phrases suggests that, associated in fact, just means structured without the aid of legally defined structural forms such as the business corporation. Limestone Development Corp. v. Lamont, 520 F3D 797, 804-805. That an enterprise must have business-like characteristics is confirmed by the text of Section 1962 in our decision in. So basically, that right there is enough. The rest of it is just still you know, building up the case that the Supreme Court had to look at this in a very expanded way, look at it more <laughs> correct and get more information because a writ of certiori, like I said at the beginning, is nothing more than the Latin word that says, I need to be more informed about what you looked at when you decided to use this term. So here's the thing. Kelly Nation, and I'm getting ready to go to the chat. But the thing I want you to understand is that they got caught up in a conspiracy of their own. And when it's time to pay the piper and people start to go into finding out how they're going to get what their just dues and desserts are because they worked hard from the sweat of their brow now here comes the federal government saying, or the entities, the entities, the entities that come through and say, I'm not giving you anything. Now you bullied me. You have made me give you my entire life and you turn around and tell me that I can't do something. Oh, well, I'm going to go after what we consider mine. And it's my voice. It's my copyright. I'm going to go after my masters. Oh, you want to go after your masters, huh? Well, how about this? Remember this? When you married that 15-year-old girl and you didn't know what you were doing because somebody somewhere told you to play it off and pretend that you were going to do it for a publicity stunt? It was real. And we got it on document. We got it on data. You see, you see how the manipulators play to mani like play people when they think that they're doing something that they've earned. This is what was happening in Robert Sylvester Kelly's case. And Jennifer Bon Jean was not supposed to be the one to come through and save the day. Jennifer Bon Jean was supposed to be the one that, you know, went along with the with the prosecutors. But Jennifer was like, attorney Von Jean was like, oh no, this is not right. She's seen the devil in the details. She's seen the devil in the details. And I'm telling you, Kelly Nation, mark my words, it's going to be at least 20 to 25 years taken off on this appeal when it may be some time. So he going to have to bite the bullet and just sit there and keep believing and keep knowing. But I see 20 to 25 years off of the New York case 
all together. All together. And the reason I see it is now we're going to plug in and bring in what the prosecution was talking about in the opening brief. But I needed to keep you focused like I was focused because my heart had dropped all the way to my toes when I heard it all together. But I needed to split it up. And you can go to other people's uh, Facebook pages. You can go to see um, Celebrating R. Kelly Facebook page. Um, and, and then you can check that out if you want and get other people's um, offering opinions. But me, myself, personally, I am from the criminal justice world. I'm from the criminal justice field that looks and teaches us how to go in and look at look for certiorari write-ups, look for dissenting opinions, look for um, consenting opinions. Because even if the judges on the panel still decides, it's, it's three of them, if that one judge that continued to talk Jennifer down decides to not agree with it, he can still be overruled by the other two, which then in turn, he would have to create what is known as a dissenting opinion. Why he felt he did not believe that, that um, these sentences were overreaching, that they were not valid to a, a RICO case, and there was not enough evidence to even convict Robert Sylvester Kelly on a charge of RICO. And that's my, that's my theory. That's what I'm going to bring out tonight. Okay. So I'm going to go to the chat. I'm going to calm myself down and then we're going to see what you guys had to say. Here we go. Free R. Kelly, period, point blank. Carolyn said, when I asked the question, do you think that if the RICO is overturned, mean that, you know, the RICO is taken off? of the 30 years, um, will it be an exonerated case and just done with again, like it was in 08? Well, I believe Carolyn, you kind of misunderstood what I was saying, but I'm going to read it anyway, because I still feel that what you had to say was vital. She says, the devil is a liar and we're going to rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Um, we not go we are not going to even claim nothing that is going to keep him there. We we are expecting him to come out of there by the help of the good Lord. So she was saying the same thing she maybe didn't understand. Uh, Carolyn, you may not have understand what I was saying, but I thank you so much. Continue to keep holding that prayer in for Robert Sylvester Kelly because there's so much going on with him that if we don't continue to just keep him uplifted, you know, all this stuff was going to be over his head. And if it wasn't for all the different outlets that's really staying positive with Robert Sylvester Kelly and his information and just giving him that the prayers that goes on in the world for, you know, individuals to just help and build them up. Oh, my God, we would have so much going on. Maxie wants some home already. She is so over it. And wise is Peace Kelly Nation. Thank you. Um, take it to the grave. Uh, Maxie, Justin, Free R. Kelly, Maurice, yes. Free this man. Good evening on this Palm Sunday. Yes, Jerico. Thank you. Take it to the grave. Okay, you understood what I was talking about. I wasn't losing you, you guys. I hope that... Um, you, I was able to keep it as, as open and understanding as I could for you tonight, because I know this is difficult and I know people love Robert and I know people want to hear what's going on, but you don't want to hear the bull crap. You don't want to hear the emotional opinions of people just getting angry and cussing and going off and doing all this stuff. So I try to keep all that at bay, but sometimes Kelly Nation, when I sit back and I look at how these, these demonic forces work on behalf of just ignorance, you know, keeping people blind, deaf, and dumb, it just really frustrates and makes me angry. Michael Virgo, 831, thank you. Thank you for being here. Michael Avenatti, however you spell it, he was the mastermind behind taking him down. Yeah, he was probably the attorney that said, let's, let's hit him with the Rico. Mm-hmm. There was a reason why 
Andrea Kelly was not okay with all the money in the world that she has gotten from her baby daddy, her baby daddy. There is so much money that this woman has gotten and her kids was damn near grown. And you mean to tell me you're going to drag him into court for a child support situation and then get on national TV and now you the superstar. Wow. Andrea, you did that to your baby's fathers, knowing that he had been so good to you, but you felt you had nothing, nothing to lose because you didn't think that we would understand what it was you were doing. Wow. Shame on you. Shame on you, Andrea Kelly. They took money from Robert and robbed him. Absolutely, Gerald. And that's why we have to say enough is enough. That man is coming home. Because if we don't fight for the in injustices of what they are doing to Robert Sylvester Kelly, we don't know who will be next. Yes, Jennifer knows what she's doing. I support her in everything she's doing. Andrea, yes, yes, thank you. Thank you for keeping us focused, you know, um, Andre, because you got to figure, you have to figure, we've been through this just like he has, you know, you got to figure there's, a, you know, mentally we have, not physically, but this thing right here was serious. This was a serious situation. You are still showing page three. Cynthia, yes, I'm sorry. It was 26 pages and I got it from a download that was specific to my cell phone. And if I had done a live with um, the cell phone, then I don't know how to put the screenshot on the cell phone yet. So you got to bear with me. But I gave as much as I could. And please, if you want, you can go and... Um, you can download, possibly you can go to um, the justice at justice.gov. I think that's where I got it from. But you could either be a student and get the whole opinion or you can get the actual case and then just pay 10 cents a page for the case. There's like 26 pages to it. But I really don't think you need to do that because we've already covered mostly everything here. Um but yes, hey, Andre, Andre, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what is it, Rod? I don't know. What is it? If you weren't here to understand um, what we were talking about today, it might be because you did not hear about what happened in the opening brief. And the opening brief was um, for New York, had to do with his appeal. And uh, so basically, Judge Ann Donnelly possibly overstretched her ability to not judge prejudicially because of what the Me Too movement asked her to do in relationship to the victims. I think she took it far emotional. And I think that what she did was she didn't look at everything. She wasn't able to look at everything. She wasn't able to keep her emotions in check. And so with that being said, she overstretched her boundaries. So when Jennifer Bonjean uh, came to the opening arguments on March the 18th, I think, um, she went before the judges and she more or less told the judges, listen, um, this RICO is overstretching. This is not an enterprise. There's not enough evidence to show that a RICO enterprise existed during the concepts of, you know, her lower level court decision. And we want to make sure that you understand what the Supreme Court has said on this level. And you're the second circuit. So that means you're under the Supreme Court. So basically, I need you to go back and look over you and two of your other Judge peers need to go back and look at what was recommended by the Supreme Court during this case. And Jennifer Bonjean created, uh, well, she she um, collaborated with the state with a uh, Supreme Court state, no, a Supreme Court law that turned into a precedence for anything involving RICO, and then that is what everyone has to adhere to until something else comes above that. 
And there is no RICO enterprise um, explanation for what Robert Sylvester Kelly did. So somebody somewhere in the prosecutorial world went and made a big lifetime series for no reason, involved million dollar industry people to create all this fiasco, give all this immunity, promised all these section eight opportunities and books, book sales and all of this and TV shows just to say that a RICO existed and it may not have even been enough, Rod, for them to genuinely say that this man should be sentenced to 30 years. That's what we're talking about. Darlene, hey, how you doing? It's so amazing. It's so amazing. I'm so grateful to have had this opportunity to leave you guys with just an ounce of hope, just an ounce of it, because this world can try to take that away from us at all times. I am super Ross. No Rico changes is a large amount of charges, but not all for R. Kelly. But I think R. Kelly has to admit what he did wrong and the truth may set him free fully, Lord willing. You know, Rod, sometimes, you know, I've come to the conclusion that the only thing that's going to set us free is to talk to our higher power because many of those people, if even if we understood what went on, even if, you know, Robert was to tell us everything that happened verbatim, do you know how many people would still judge him just because he was human? If in fact that is the case, I don't know, but I feel like he don't owe anybody an explanation, not even those who support him. He just needs to be okay within himself and talk to his higher power and get that ammunition that's needed for him to come home and really, really continue to live his life in a free and just and equal world when he's been overcharged. Because that's what it's looking like. People are still going to naysay. People are still going to disrespect. People are still going to say that he did this and he did that. So he's going to have to have a tougher skin than any other time in his life. And he's going to have to prove to himself that he's strong and capable and he's, he's willing. And if he could sit back and prove that he is strong enough to be as quiet as he was when all them people was coming up against him. See, Robert know about this whole Rico thing. He know that if it was or if it wasn't an enterprise, we just on the outside looking in. But Robert know what went down. And those people that sat up against him and lied to me, I'm looking at it as an ob observational study. This man sat back and let all them people tell lies on him and said nothing. Crucified, sitting in a courthouse and nobody. But Jennifer Bonjean was there for him. Do you know how much power someone can get from that to believe in themselves and don't give a damn what nobody else got to say and walk this walk and talk that talk like you are the most powerful thing on the face of this planet. That's how we got to be when we got that F on our chest. Yes, yes. Um, Sir Miguel, how were you? Good afternoon. One success mindset, all the beautiful people in the chat. Yes, yes, yes. So blessings, blessings to everyone. The government be playing dirty. Yes, Justin. Yes, they do. Southern Bell, he knew a blessing was coming to reveal the truth. You said that years ago, girl, Southern Bell, you always be on it. You do. Vanessa, hey. Yeah, you know, though, I wouldn't even call them dirty judges. This is what they do in their system. They're dirty on this side. When we look at it, they're dirty. But in their system, they think we're the, we're the criminals. They think we're the wrong ones. The only ones that's supposed to eat in this world, Vanessa, are those who choose to do wrong and put people in positions where they make money for them. Slave master mentality. That's all it's always about. And yes, Michelle, it's nothing but God, nothing but God, because without God, he would have been and tore that whole courtroom up and they would have had something to really, really, you know, get him for. They would have had something to really show the, the media. Oh, NBC and Fox was waiting on that. 
But that man sat still and he knew in the middle of the storm, in the midst of the, the, the tsunami, he already knew. That's how in tune you got to be with you and your higher power. And that's how he going to get through. That's how he getting through. That's the truth. I like R. Kelly said, use your common sense. Okay. All right. Andre. Yes, he did. When he was, that, that was how they was expecting him to be unhinged in the courtroom. Ah. Uh -huh. Mm-hmm. We gave the devil something to talk about, right? Now they sitting there, the devil sitting there like, damn, we ain't got no more food. We ain't, we're hungry. Please let us in. See, there's going to be 144,000 chosen ones that's going to awaken the masses. And guess what? He's one of them. And he did it on national TV. It will be televised. God will never leave nor forsake those who are trying to do just halfway right. And yes, I understand some people sit back and look at these victims, but go back and go back and do research on every one of them victims and see where they are right now and see ain't they still living their lives, doing their best thing. And it's not because they're feeling good that that um, justice has been served. No. No, we're going to see. Pay attention to their lives in the next 10 years. Let's see what happens to Andrea Kelly in the next 10 to 20, 15 years. Yeah, yeah, because that's going to tell you, that's going to show you who's right and who's wrong. If, our, if God can still, you know, karma come and hit everybody where it's supposed to be. And if it's okay to deal with that form of karma and you can handle it and you can say, okay, I'm paying my debt now. This is it. You don't owe the world not a damn sentence if you don't want to speak. You owe no man. Yep, everybody's been saying that Jennifer, attorney Jennifer Bonjean has been exactly who she is to Robert Sylvester Kelly. Absolutely. And I'm sure everybody understands how powerful this woman really has been. Absolutely. They would need to go after Sony to make this stick. G-Lo, let's talk about that. They would need to go after Sony to make this stick. If they went to Sony to make the Rico charge stick, I don't see how. What Sony, if anything, Sony to me is like Tasha K right now. Able to be, able to be sued for, you know, defamation and all that. So talk to me, G-Lo. Tell me what you mean by that. And then I'm going to get back to you. Jay Legend, T-Pain, Charlie Sheen, and others lived with two girlfriends and nobody says anything. Because it wasn't about that. Um, Jay Legend, what it was about was, um, it was about controlling the situation and scenario. The two girlfriends, I wouldn't be surprised if Azrael wasn't a pawn set up before um, R. Kelly got into the trouble. Because I believe Joycelyn was already there. Azrael, I don't know who went, who came first. But regardless of what, they might have both been set up. They might have been both set up just to get R. Kelly to, you know, be distracted for that moment. Because maybe if the women wasn't in his lives, he, alive, he probably would have maybe been doing some other stuff, like making them tours and different things like that. Yes. Sandra, it is very sad. And it's a shame that Robert had to go through that. But you know what? I believed, and this is what I said back in 2019, 2020, early 2020. I said... By them locking Robert Sylvester Kelly up during a time of a pandemic, it was to open our eyes to something very, very clear that was right before our eyes. And that is, oh, mm -mm -mm. the things that we have to deal with when we sit back and look at how a world plays a game like that. Creating a pandemic just to just to do, you know, little underhanded stuff. 
But them 144,000 has been awakened. And this eclipse coming up April 8th, oh, it's going to be a beautiful time. Portals are going to be all open, all open. So start meditating and praying now and meditating on the good, not just April 8th, the weeks before that and weeks after that. Because this, this thing only happens once in maybe 100 years or whenever. I, I know some uh, lunar eclipses and so, or solar eclipses happen, you know, once a year on, on all levels all over. But yeah, there's something big going on in the sky. So pay attention to it. I totally agree with you on her. And I believe his ex-wife was in this from the beginning. Everybody was in it from the beginning. They were all pawns set on a, a chessboard. And you know how I knew that something bigger was happening and the spirit kept telling me to stay awake and stay focused on the R. Kelly appeal and don't focus on any of the other drama. Sometimes I would get sucked into it like, wow, what's going on? Da, 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 da. And even in this situation right now, with all of the appeal stuff happening with Robert Sylvester Kelly, you got a whole entire governmental system that's shutting itself down with nothing but uh, um, um, all type of corruption, all types of corruption all over the place, right? But see, there's something that God told me and it said, sit back and just observe how this thing goes down. Just sit back and look at how it goes down. Everybody that was in the process from the beginning of Robert's case to the first person that showed up, to the last person that spoke, all those people were all set there like as if they were characters in a film. Mm -hmm. It's something bigger that was going on. It was something bigger that was taking place. This is why she's holding on to his last name, acting like she earned it. No, she did not earn it, Darlene. That is important too. That is extremely important because to hold her name, mean, hold his name would mean that she was the one that was separated from all the other women that were involved. She was the one that he married. I wonder how that got through. But guess what? He married... Even if it was fake, he married Aaliyah first. So she's just second. She's second, second place. And she acts like it as well. Second place. So thank you so much for going over the information. You did a wonderful job. Cynthia, thank you so much. I did not know how long this thing was going to take. I knew that it was a lot to break down, but Jennifer Bonjean laid it out there for us. And said, listen, if you want to really and truly and genuinely know what I'm doing, and this is what they taught us in criminal justice. They said, if you want to get to the bottom of a reasoning, of a theme, of a purpose, of how this thing happens, go to the Supreme Court level. Go to precedents that matter in the cases in which you're trying to connect it to. Don't connect the same thing. Like we ain't going to connect bank robbery to what Robert Sylvester Kelly did. I hope we're not thinking on that level, but just playing the, playing the game of pawning each other, pawning things out, putting Robert Sylvester Kelly in the place of what the Supreme Court said in the RICO case. That's all we were doing. And that's what Jennifer was doing. And then the judge act like he don't understand the law of, of, um, the the law of justice when you look at Supreme Court cases. But maybe he needs to go over it and re review it. He got 90 days to do so. So I don't see think it would be a long time before they go ahead and make their decision. And I believe that their decision, if it will come back, I do I do believe that two will consent um to and or, or two will uphold um the the sentence reduction and maybe one may dissent. Maybe one may say, I don't agree with it. And two may say, yeah, this needs to be looked at. That's why it's three and not one. It's not enough for a RICO charge. That is why she's doing what she's doing to try 
to get them to see and understand this is not Rico. He shouldn't be charged with no Rico. Absolutely, Darlene. And that's what we are holding on to. And I thank you for giving me that breath, giving us that breath of fresh air, because that is powerful. That is really, really good. His silence has been broken and he's speaking so loudly right now. Andre, you and your mama have said that <laughs> since 2020. And I never understood like what y'all mean, silent. He need to be speaking. But y'all had something else. There was something else that God was using y'all to say that for. And you've been saying that since 2019. And I am so appreciative that you guys made it over here to R. Kelly Appeal TV. And for those of you who have stuck and stayed, I thank you so much. And we will always have a place for Robert Sylvester Kelly's information, whatever's going on in this world. If you want to know, in the know, you know, even after this, it's all said and done. We'll always have a sit down conversation about Rob. And um, nobody but God and peace be still. That's another term you always use, Andre. I listen to him every day. Michelle, that's right. That's right. Play thought after the 30-year sentence days, all they have made it in the shade. Nobody was going to come to his rescue, but they were wrong. Jennifer picked up the, yes! And guess what, Darlene? Not only did she pick up New York, she picked up Chicago. She picked up the BOP officers. She, she was still fighting exonerations all over the world where she was at. She's a multitasker with three people in her building. And you can't tell me that God can't move through people to give them the, the will that they need. Even when her daddy passed away, she was like, I got to pause for this, but I'm coming right back. I'm coming back because that is God moving through her. And that's how we are supposed to be. We are not supposed to just continue to allow hatred, uh, um, um, injustices, disrespect, violence, and all that other stuff, all that evil to go on because we're afraid to just stand up. You know how many times she's probably had death threats on her life, but she like somehow or another, I'm hidden in plain sight. God got me covered. I'm going to do whatever I am here to do. I know the assignment. And as long as we know the assignment, guess what? We will always be protected, period, point blank always be protected. Beauty and me, they have already taken the Gail King interview and tried to make him a madman and a monster. Girl, let me tell you, they wanted to see that in that courtroom in Chicago, Minnesota, and in New York. They wanted to see him act a damn fool and come all unhinged and be ready to fight the world because that's how they see our black men as King Kong, really. But see, our black men know how to handle their business now. We ain't buying into that. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. No, 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 no. Take it to the grave. I really hope that they do not break him. They won't. If he ain't been broke by now, the shoe, this is the light at the end of the, the tunnel now. <laughs> if he ain't been broken already, see, to sit there and look at them people, say all the manner of the evil, some truth, some lies. Everybody got some truth and some lies. But for him to have to deal with either, some of them was good things that they said about him, some of them wasn't. But I guarantee you this much, y'all, and I thank everybody that's here. We got 635. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I think I tell you this much, Kelly Nation. I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say this loud and clear. I guarantee you that he had to break down in his spirit when he walked away and in the middle of the night and he laid it with that pillow holding everything screaming to the top of his lungs and there was nothing that he could do but that made him feel good that put him to sleep you know what i'm saying that gave him that peace of mind and he let some things go he didn't let some things go all the way from the the childhood era the things that he had within his heart that he never even knew he is confiding in that little boy within him the little robert the one from Chicago, you know, the one before he became R. Kelly that nobody seemed to care about, but turned their back on him as soon as he got in this trouble. Yeah. Money-making businessmen. Okay, I got to come see who you are, money-making businessmen. 
how you keep those text messages out of evidence. That's great. Tell me about it. They keep the text messages. They keep the parents from coming up, saying anything or being, you know, uh, cross-examined or put on the stand. They give immunity to who they want. Man, this is a whole bunch of fiasco. This ain't nothing but a bunch of clowns with big red noses and big curly green hair that's on the trampoline, jumping around in the sky, just saying, look at me. That's exactly what it was. Mm -hmm. When he gets out, Kelly needs to go after everyone who put him through all this. Yes, take it to the grave. Absolutely. Vanessa, let me see. Um, Let me see. Okay. She really do. Have a great evening, everyone. Yeah, I'm about to get off too. <laughs> Sir Miguel, they didn't think help was on the way. God sent Bonjean and her group in Robert Sylvester Kelly's behalf. Absolutely. You know it. And that's how, and 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 guess what? Robert Sylvester Kelly got so many supporters, so many people that are not the ops that are really, really genuinely down for him. And this is why I believe that, you know, everybody is doing their part. Lady D represented Robert Sylvester Kelly, celebrating R. Kelly, Solar Coaster, uh, Facebook, so many wonderful people that I know I connect to on a regular basis. We love R. Kelly Facebook page. So many different individuals um, that I just am so grateful to have known. You know, the storm is almost over. It's over now. It's over. So I just want to say thank you. Thank everybody. Um, and uh, hey, Big V, um, I thank everybody for everything that you guys are here doing. And um, yeah, Big V, I need you to let me know if um, cause I cause I looked at your I looked at your YouTube channel regarding the um what was it? It was the opening brief was it in New York and I liked how you said that about the prosecution because if it wasn't for me going to your channel and getting that little bit of hope that would not have made me go focus harder on this appeal part or this process here regarding the appeal and what citations Bonjean used in that case and I am just so thankful that we are continuing to move on and continue to give each other hope in this arena. So thank you so much, guys. And we will see you all next time. And uh, this Sunday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're going to go over Trunquette. And we're going to look at some more uh, details. We're going to definitely go over the prosecutorial um, pr process and review the entire New York um, appeal opening brief from both sides, both prosecution and defense. But I had to be biased over here. Yes, I did. Because R. Kelly Appeal TV, we did not need to hear another Lifetime series documentary because that's what prosecution was and kept talking about all the people that was pertinent in the Lifetime docuseries. And I knew that hearing that would have made it seem so mm, devastating, like it was the end, but the end is only the beginning. So thank you all for being here. Thank you for liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing to this podcast. We really appreciate everyone. You have a great and wonderful rest of your night. And please don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button on your way out. Peace, and we'll see you next time.